Well, I'm taking it off. Well, it's long. I don't know how to. You don't wash your hair. You look like you look like a movie. Is it right? supposed to be parted in the center? Pardon me? Is it supposed to be parted Well, no, it's just supposed to, as long as it doesn't look too messy, that's all. Talking about Texas wind. That's right. Whew, it's so windy outside. Yes, My hair, <laughs> what can I say? Um, so what did you do, boy? I'm going to have. <laughs> <laughs> that's a switch. That's a switch. <laughs> Okay. That's pretty sharp. Uh, That's you want to have? Uh, no, I just uh, you want to keep your camera in your lap or whatever. Sure, I'll, okay. I'll get rid of it okay. right now. No, it doesn't matter. Oh, okay. this, uh, just so we can match the two shots and everything else that goes on. Okay. All right. Tell me when you're rolling. Oh, all right. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Yeah, I, I shall then. <laughs> where do you call home? Uh, I mean, uh, probably L.A. now, but where? where well, Chicago uh, is where I was brought up, and I started off in the suburbs of Chicago, and then moved into the city just before high school, yeah. uh, where I attended an all-boy Catholic high school, 2,600 guys. All packed into this little box of a school. Yeah, we go. <clears throat> well, Jason, as I sat there watching the movie, I I just was trying to become a kid again and thinking, all right, I'm a kid, you know, I'm 12, 13, 14, and uh, trying to look at it from that point of view and thinking, that guy's got to be having the most terrific time. Well, so I, I want to ask you, you know, uh, did you have the most terrific time? Yeah, beyond what even you interpreted. Uh, it, it's beyond any experience I've ever had in my entire life. Not only the filming of it, not only working with a great actor in Lou Gossett, and a, another great actor in David Suchet, a great director, Sidney Fury, but also in the whole experience of, of seeing different cities, work, uh, working in Israel, uh, part of the time, uh, seeing different cultures, uh, all these different things added to the experience. And when you see it all put together, it, that even, it adds to, you know, the nervousness you have and, and you know, you get the, the butterflies in the stomach and then when it's all together, it, it, it brings it all back and so it all comes to like a head and there you are. Next thing you know it, everyone loves the film and like you said, you had a great time with it, which is its sole purpose. It was solely made for you to go back and feel like a kid again or, or to feel like you've been on this adventure or you've been through these flights. And um, so to answer your questions, it was the best experience of my entire life. Did you get to do some flying? I went up in a trainer plane, um, a, a trainer F-16 jet. It's not exactly an F-16, but um, it, still, it still carries G-forces which is something that I really wanted to experience. So when we did do this, the studio work with the uh, rear projection is what they call it. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I, could, I could have an understanding of, of how the G-forces pull you and how it affects your face. So would it affect your speaking? Would it you know, affect body language? Does it make you stiff? Uh, would you be able to lift your head off, off the back of the seat? And um, all these things are things that I wanted to more or less um, compute up here so I can have that readily available. Um, I flew in a Cessna, which, which I got to learn how to fly, which was a great experience. Uh, you actually controlled it? Yes. When, when, not, not through the entire snake sequences, uh, but when I went up, Art Scholl, who did a phenomenal job on the show, uh, basically taught me in a day how to fly a Cessna. Uh, so, just flying in, in both, you know, both ranges was, was, was a great experience. Did you actually uh, experience some of the stunts with him when, when you went No, I didn't. No. Uh, that, that's a bit too risky. Uh, not for me, per se. I think they're a bit more concerned about their film and having to start over. And Although I'm sure they're, you know, they're not inhuman, but uh, in, in terms of insurance purposes, they, they couldn't afford that much of a loss, at, you know, at that point in time. So that's why they hunt higher stuntmen 
and stunt pilots and whatnot. Do you have a, a big urge now to, to do some more flying? Uh, definitely, when, when I can. I certainly don't think I could put in hours to get you know an official pilot's license, only because my time is so taken and absorbed with um, acting classes and voice classes and uh, just overall studies. I'm, I'm putting myself through my own researches and uh, I'm writing a little bit. I'm investigating perhaps in, in piano. I, I'll see how that goes. But I have so much, so many different activities right now that I really wouldn't be able to drive, you know, two hours away where the, the you know, most accessible airport would be and fly, you know, around with a certain pilot and, and get and accrue my hours, so to speak, pilot's hours. But when I have the opportunity, I would love to. It's, it's a definite thrill for me. Um, were there lots of young actors considered for the role that you play? As I understand, um, it was something like over 250 other actors, and they've seen many, many other people. Uh, and they weren't even sure about me at, at first. I went through six auditions, um, three, the last three of which were tapings. And um, it's a very strange feeling when you know you're being somewhat put on the spot for that third time and that fourth time and trying to figure out what they liked and what they didn't like. If they have you back there, they like you for a reason. If they have you back there, they also didn't like something or they, they missed something. Otherwise, they could, would have been able to make their decision yes or no. So sorting that out puts a little bit of pressure or did put pressure on me as an actor to find out which things were best and which things, you know, were, were things I should leave out. And um, figuring it out, I would probably credit most of that to Ron Samuels, the producer of the film. Uh, he would basically fill me in kind of what the rest of the crew were thinking and what they were talking about. And um, it was like we almost had this, this little alliance behind everyone's backs about what was missing and what, what was there that I should maintain. Uh, and that ultimately led to me getting the role, which, as I said, for me, is the ultimate in my life, which has been the ultimate experience in my life. Jason, one last question, and that is, um, for you, you're the, the son. Uh, does the whole premise of the movie have a reality for you? In other words, can you envision yourself uh, having that sort of of, of desire to help your father if he were in a similar situation. Absolutely, but I wouldn't only, you know, relate that to my father. The experience of Doug Masters going from a position of being trapped by society or trapped by uh, another government, and it's through his father. I felt trapped in my own way, um, not feeling like I could be an actor, not feeling like I could really do it and having a certain determination to get myself out to California, totally against many friends and family's wishes, and just getting involved in acting classes and getting involved in wanting to do it and wanting to try and really go for it and having feeling like everything is against me in every which way. And then taking things in my own hands at that point, uh, ultimately getting a, a lead role in a, in a feature film like The Iron Eagle. To me, is almost a rescue mission of my of myself and, and my own person. Um, obviously, a film is is surrealistic. Otherwise, you know, there's no sense in making it. Otherwise, it's everyday life. But I think, in my own way, there's a very close similarity and comparison that can be drawn from my own personal life and Doug Master's life and and his uh, need to save his father's life. That's probably why you're so convincing in it. Well, thank you very much. That's great. Jason, hope I'll get to talk with you again sometime. Congratulations on a really thank fine you. performance. I should have known this picture was coming.